Ladies and gentlemen, this is Game and Telecom video. As you may well be aware, there's a new Titan soon to be arriving in town, and it is known as the Titan X. No, I didn't make a mistake there, as regular readers or viewers will know. Nvidia have decided to call the new Titan Titan X once again, which I still feel is a bit of a mistake. I think they should have changed the letter just a little bit or just called it Titan P. Regardless of all of the semantics, the new Titan is, of course, based upon the Pascal architecture. And for those individuals wondering what the performance is going to be like, there have been a few leaked benchmarks. Unfortunately, we don't know the frame rate performance increase in games, but what we can do is have a look at the performance of synthetic benchmarks. Now, bear in mind that the Titan X has 3584 CUDA cores, which is clocked at 1531 MHz boost. Obviously, your mileage may vary with the normal caveats of boost clocks. And compared to the 3072 CUDA cores and the 1075 MHz of the older brother, that's quite the difference, and that does translate rather nicely when it comes to the Titan X Pascal performance with the synthetic benchmarks. Now, they are primarily focused on CUDNN, and that is obviously the fact that it's aimed upon the prosumer which is basically individuals who do gaming, but also might want compute-based functionality. So, for example, they might spend a lot of time in, let's say, Maya, video editing, and the normal other applications. And what you can see on screen is between a 63-ish percent increase up to 200 percent increase over the previous generation Maxwell which is absolutely insane. Now, there are a couple of small caveats here. Um, primarily, the new Titan X is using a newer implementation of Kuden, so it's not necessarily it's just hardware bet gains. Some of it may well be the fact that, well, obviously, you've got the new optimizations. But regardless of that, if you look at Alexnet, uh, forward only, we're just going to focus on one benchmark because I'll be here all day reading them out and you can see them anyway. Forward only 32.5 compared to the new Titan X which is just 18.7. That's ridiculous. As I said, that's almost twice uh, twice the increase which obviously is based upon time. Or VGG, batch 64, 200.8 compared to 104.8 which honestly is just absolutely ludicrous and Bonkers. Now, if you were to start doing some ma mathematics on this, and yes, I deliberately screwed that up. Didn't work out quite how I'd hoped, though. There's a roughly 16% core increase, that's number of CUDA cores, and the clock speed increase is around 40-ish percent. I say 40-ish percent because, once again, the normal caveats of boost clocks apply based upon the amount of heat. Sometimes it can go a little bit higher, sometimes it could go a little bit lower, and obviously different vendors and all that jazz, but essentially around 40-ish percent. So some of this is going to def... I'm sorry about the random people revving in the background there. So some of this is definitely going to be attributed to the fact that the card is just faster, but also some of it is going to be relevant to the fact that, well, it is slight improvements to the actual benchmarking software. I have had a few folks who have actually wrote asking my opinion on the Titan X, and in case you've missed it, it is of course based upon the GP102 core, and that is 16nm. It's basically the GTX 1080 revisited. It's on steroids. So while the 1080 has 2560 CUDA cores, this has 3584. The boost clock is slightly less, uh, 1733 of the 1080 versus 1530 of the Titan X, but it's the pricing. Now, some folks have called the Titan X, and I don't necessarily agree 100% with the sentiment, but I cannot certainly understand where they're coming from. Some people have said that the Titan X is basically dead on arrival, and by which they mean, let's say that it's coming out 2nd of August, let's say that you buy the card on 2nd of August and you don't have to save up monies or whatever, well, the rumours are that the next generation cards, Volta, are going to be out at some point in 2017, which is going to be also using the 16nm FinFET process, we talked about that a few days ago, which 
Obviously, it's going to be a massive speed up with the Titan X. There are rumours that we're going to have a HBM2 version of the Titan cards. Whether that's going to come true or not, I have no idea. But the big thing for the average gamer, and this is the one that really makes a difference for me, is the fact that this card is going to be 1200 bucks. Now, obviously, if you are someone who needs this level of performance, if you're someone who needs the features of the Titan, that's all great, that's all dandy, and that's all shiny. But for the average person, it's very hard to make the the logical leap of saying, well, I can buy one Titan X. Let's say you only have like $1,200, which I say only. I mean, that's a lot of money. It's hard for me to say for you to buy just one Titan X and let's say be able to run a game at 60 FPS at 4K. Let's just assume that the card can do that. While you could buy two 1080s for exactly the same price and have an awful lot more performance and the power consumption isn't that much higher because it's 180 watts versus 250 of the titan x now i'm not saying that a 1080 sli solution is perfect for everyone there are sli concerns vulcan at the moment doesn't have full sli support or dual card supports DirectX 12 is a bit dicey for some applications, but most games are fine and it's getting better over the next couple of months. And it's hard to argue the raw pixel pushing power. That's a really good sentence, isn't it? The raw, the raw pixel pushing power is prolific with the 1080. I don't know why, I just want to keep going with the P's. But anyway, it's absolutely just tremendous with the 1080s. And for the average person, of course, a 1070 or a 1070 SLI is just it's just bonkers but i'm not having a downer on the titan x it's a very impressive gpu indeed but i have a feeling that the target market is going to be rather small anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now